Welcome to Well-Rounded Mama's YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Servillo. I am one of the midwives here at Well-Rounded Mama in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I am also the instructor for the fertility workshop here at Well-Rounded Mama. Today, I wanted to talk to you about charting your cycle. Charting your cycle is a fantastic way to start to get an idea of how your body works, how your hormones fluctuate. And if you ever need to consult a fertility specialist for any reason, it is paramount that you try to chart your cycle before you go and talk to a physician about some complications that might be arising, some difficulties when it comes to fertility. So charting your fertility is a great first step towards understanding the ebbs and flows of how your body works. So. To start us off, I want to tell you that I am a big believer in the fertility awareness method that is very different from the rhythm method, which is going off of your last cycle to predict future fertility. That is not evidence-based. However, the fertility awareness method is more founded in science and is based off of how your body is reacting during the current cycle to predict whether or not you are having a fertile day or not. When you are charting your own cycle, I recommend getting some sort of little notebook or downloading an app. Try not to get an app that is a predictor based off of your last menstrual period. So that's the important part of figuring out whether or not an app will work for you when you are doing the fertility awareness method. So what you're going to write down every cycle, three things. First, you want to start your chart, your fertility chart on the first day of your period. Now, obviously on the first day of your period, you're not going to be noting like cervical mucus and some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about in a moment but you just want to know like how heavy your period was whether or not there was spotting or any weird discharge your temperature things like that okay so we're starting on day one once you are done with your period you want to start taking an oral temperature first thing in the morning so this is upon waking so the first thing that you'll want to chart is your waking temperature. The second thing that you want to chart is cervical mucus. And the third thing that you want to chart is the position of your cervix. And I'll just kind of briefly go over each one and what that means. When it comes to taking your temperature, your temperature rises by at least two tenths of a point when you ovulate. So it's a good indication that you have at least ovulated. And that temperature really maintains until you get your period. So when your temperature raises after ovulation, it usually will stay elevated for 12 to 16 days until you get to your period. However, if you don't get your period and you saw that temperature rise, that thermal shift, and it's gone on for at least 18 days and you don't have your period, you might be pregnant. That's actually a good first sign that you could have a positive pregnancy. However, if you have that for less than 10 days, that gives you some really valuable information because that could mean that you have very low progesterone because you didn't actually have that long enough luteal phase. So it just gives us some really good information. So waking temperature, noticing when there is that thermal shift, when you are going up a couple points in temperature. I also recommend that you use the same thermometer every time, usually something that's oral. However, those ones that go in your ear and the ones that are temporal for your forehead, those are not great. I, I would choose a more accurate thermometer than one of those if you're using it specifically for fertility stuff. The next thing that you want to check is your cervical fluid. So I'm going to talk about some discharge and things just to give you a heads up. When your body is getting ready to ovulate, it wants to help sperm get to the egg. Okay. How it does that is the closer you get to ovulation and specifically when you are ovulating, your body creates lots of wet, slippery cervical mucus. That is what helps the sperm get to your egg, essentially. We want it to be pretty viscous, like egg whites. Some people actually mistake having a yeast infection or something around the time that they ovulate because you can get kind of this thick, milky white discharge around that time period, but you'll notice that during a specific time point, during your cycle that it should shift into a more wet, silky, like 
know, like an egg white consistency, if you can imagine. That is your fertile day. Once you start getting that kind of cervical fluid, that accompanied by the next day having a thermal shift means that you ovulated. So that would be the peak day, the nice time period to conceive, that you would probably have the best chances of conceiving during that time period. Those are important things to know. The last thing that you can check, and this can be super helpful, especially if you don't notice thermal shifts or if you're not really noticing differences in cervical fluid, is checking your cervix position. So what you do is you would choose a similar position every day when you check this usually some sort of squat or you can kind of like lunge with the leg up on a chair and you just insert two fingers and you're going to feel for something that kind of resembles a very small dimple or almost like a like a donut <laughs> is the best way that I can describe it but your fingers should kind of fit into like a little tiny like divot towards the end. And early on in your cycle, it kind of feels like your nose, like it's that consistency, like it's pretty firm and it's not very open, um, but it is low. So typically right after your period, you'll notice that you have kind of a lower cervix. Once you start getting towards your fertile days, that's gonna get higher up, but it's going to get much softer, more like your cheek and it's going to start getting a little bit more open and you'll notice that lots of slippery cervical mucus is coming out. I know, so glorious, all of this stuff, right? So glamorous. So those are the three things that I would note on your paper. And when you are noticing that nice high cervix and your temperature is starting to shift and you've got that nice slippery wet fluid, that means you're fertile. I would either abstain <laughs> or go for it if that is the goal that you are trying to achieve by tracking your cycle. Um, but those are some things that I would start with that'll give you some valuable information regarding your cycle, specifically on how long your cycle is. And if later down the road you decide you do want some sort of fertility counseling or you want some sort of testing to tell you how your hormones are doing, knowing your cycle will give you so much more information so that you know exactly when to take those tests and you'll get the most accurate information. I hope that was really valuable. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and ring the little bell so you can get notifications for our next videos. Thank you so much. Have a great day. That kind of resembles a very small like dimple or almost like a, like a donut <laughs> is the best way that I can describe it. Like, you know, like an egg white consistency, if you can imagine got a little bit of a snap to it. <laughs>